Hello, it's Mary Lou here. Hello. Um, I had a request by a friend of mine, a dear friend of mine who lives clear across the country to help her learn to make journal covers like I make them. And we're talking about chipboard covers. Um, so I sat down to try to write it all out for her and I saw that was futile real quick because it just takes too much time and I was having to make pictures it just this will be much quicker i hope so and i'll share it with all of you if whoever wants to watch it um let me tell you about my my i wished i had one here to show you that was made the way i'm going to tell you but i don't so um when i make my journals i make them different than most journal makers that i know of when i first started making them I would leave a quarter inch between each signature. That quickly turned out to be a way to have a super chunky journal. And I wasn't having it. So, uh, because I like them to be roomy enough for whoever I sell them to, to be able to um, add more things to it. And I make super chunky journals. I, I do over the top journals, I know. So I started leaving a half inch between each signature. So that's going to make my spine a little bigger, a lot bigger, <laughs> but it gives you such, a, in my opinion, now this is my own humble opinion, it gives uh, much more room. So then, um, and then I'll tell you the next point that I want to make um, in a minute. Um, let me, let me tell you what pieces you need. This is for a five by seven journal kit. When I make a 5 by 7 and I make a lot of 5 by 7 journal, I use a lot of 5 by 7 journal kits, and I create some, too. Um, when I do that, I, I make my journal covers 7 and a half by 5 and a half. I know that most journal makers do the seven, do seven and a quarter or seven and a half tall. Maybe they might put a quarter of inch on each side or an eighth of an inch on each side, but I like a full quarter inch on top and bottom. And then my journal pages sewn into the signature, say on this side, I don't want them coming out. I want a half inch recession in for the journal pages. Why? Because sometimes I put lace on the edges of my journals and sometimes I put things that stick out. I don't want them to stick out from the edges of my journal. I want them all to be contained as much as possible within that journal. So I, when I'm making a journal kit that is seven by five, I make my journal cover seven and a half by five and a half. This is medium weight chipboard. You could just as easily use, I like granola boxes. I like graham cracker boxes. Um, they're just a little sturdier. They're a, more of a, a little more lightweight than this, but they're still really, you know, by the time you put, I put 110 pound cardstock inside and outside of my journal covers. So that makes them pretty sturdy. Plus I put Tyvek in there. Okay. So you need two of those. There's my two. And because I'm going to make a journal for, um, a three signature um, journal. <laughs> I'm going to make a cover for a three signature journal. I'm going to make a two inch spine. So three signatures, half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch. That's two inches. Okay. That's how I do it. I feel, every time I have to redo a, a new one, like a four inch or skip back to a two inch or a two, two signature, I have to get my fingers out and count because I'm retarded and old. Anyway, so my this is going to be seven and a half by two. Okay, I use Tyvek, and I'll show you where you put everything. I cut my piece of Tyvek for this particular size of a journal cover at three and three quarters, which I'll explain that in a minute. Three and three quarters by seven, and I'll show you why in just a second. I'll leave it right here so I'll remember. Okay. To cut the cardstock, if I'm, I'm, I didn't want to make up a journal that I couldn't use or a journal cover that I couldn't use, so I'll probably use a black one at some time. So I make it a black journal cover. So I've cut two pieces 
of, I wrote them down. Let me find them. Cat cardstock for the outer part of the cover. I make six and a half wide. Yes, that's right. Six and a half and nine and a half tall. And I cut two of those. For the spine, I would cut a piece that's four inches by nine and a half. Okay, and I'll ex you'll see why. Why I only do it an extra inch beyond my cover. But you'll see why and how I do them. And if you've done them this way, then this is no secret. Um, I've watched a lot of journals and I've made a lot of journals. And I just found this was the quickest and easiest way to make a sturdy and neat journal. So those are the pieces you need. And then for your inner... Your inner... Um, liner I just I'm not going to glue this part down because I don't know what I'm going to make like I said use this journal for so you're going to need I cut the inner liner which is where you put on the inside and we'll show you as we go along five and a quarter by seven and a quarter Got two of those and then for the spine I cut three and three quarters by seven and a quarter and that way I can punch on this edge punch on this edge and still have plenty of room to cover that three that two inch spine and with some overlap okay so now let me get it get it going and we'll show you what we do i'm going to actually make a cover here for you so you get an idea of how it's how i do it and there's probably a hundred ways to do it but this is how i learned to do it or how i figured out okay all right i'm just deciding i like when it's curved at all and this has a bit of a curved edge right here. So I'm going to put that down. So what I do first, I use Fabri-Tac. Here's your supplies. I use 3 8 inch score tape or whatever you like. I use Fabri-Tac. And I, the only other tool I think I'm going to need is a score, uh, bone folder. So I should have filled this glue bottle up before I started. But here we go. My hubby just went to bed, so I thought, well, I'll do this quickly. I apply glue everywhere, thickly. Now, it is going to stick because we're going to wrap it. That paper is going to be applied with with the score, pal, uh, score tape. sorry, And um, so it will hold, but I still don't like my covers to, you know, flap at all. You know how they do if you don't glue them down well? And I just get it on all the edges, get a good coating. Now, what you're going to do, put the lid on. Always put your lid, set it back down on your, your Fabri-Tac, and it won't bubble up on you or make a mess, make goobers. So you can see I'm putting approximately an inch on each side, and I'm laying this piece right smack dab against this edge. You see I have an inch here, an inch here, and an inch here. And then I just rub it all over to get it down. Use your bone folder. Sometimes I just find the hand does better because it's more even and it doesn't leave lines on your paper. So just push it down and get it set real good and then set that piece aside. But now we need to look at this. Although, if you're going to do this with printed, you're going to have to pay attention to how your pattern's going because this, this one's going to go this this way. So I'm going to put this one here. You got that? Okay. So, but I don't have a pattern, so I have to worry about that. But if you do, pay attention to what's going to be your front cover and your back cover. If you need to, write it on there for to get it set. Okay, so let me put glue on this. Give it the good squeeze. And here's another trick about fabric tack that I've learned that works best for me. Because I have some problems with grip, especially in my thumbs because of like I said I'm old <laughs> and I seem to have arthritic uh, thumbs so um, and some breakdown there so I buy the large bottle which runs about 
$10 at Walmart. Cheapest place I've found it. And I buy the little bottle too. And so when the little bottle runs out, I fill it with the big bottle. And that's how I keep my supply going. Yeah, that's what I want to do. So now I'm going to do my best to try to get them the same because that does make it easier to work with. Get them pretty close the same. And then get them lined up right on that line again. That's what I like about Fabri-Tac. It's got some room, some wiggle room or some time to, you know, work with it. Okay, that's close enough. So then I'm going to smoosh it down. Okay, so those two are done. Now, yeah, I did good. Now, I'm going to put, try to put this in the center about right here. And you can check with the other one to make sure you're lined up pretty well as far as top to bottom. Then you just want to make sure you're side to side. So now I put the glue on. I hope you could see me and I'm in because I know that camera is, it's hard to, to position it so that I can see in it and you can see through it, down through it. Get it on the edges good. Okay, put the top back on your glue. If you need to, draw a line top to bottom, an inch from, and, you know, a center line. Let's see if that's pretty even. You can probably see it better than I can from the top. But I think that looks pretty good. So again, we're going to smoosh it down. Okay. Now, we're going to let those dry for a second. And while they're drying, we're going to take the score, pal, score tape. And we're going to, let's start with this one. It's dried first. I put it across here just to the line of where this chipboard is about. I put it on the same, on the other side. I hope you're doing well and staying safe. It's important that you do that. Take care of yourself now, your mental and physical well-being. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do the same here. Just run it across there. Okay, yeah, I don't care if they're perfect. And then I'm going to do the same here, only I'm going to just go ahead and run it clear to this corner. It's sticky stuff, this one. Okay. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to put it across here. Okay. I do like to make sure that it's, you know... Draw your bone folder across them to make sure they're down nice and tight. Because if they aren't, that tape won't pull off very well. And you'll have you'll be fighting with it. So we'll set that one aside for a minute and we'll do this one. Doesn't matter which order you do it in, just do it.
And I don't know how to speed up a video. I guess I need to learn that in case you get tired of watching me do this. But we learn as we go. Okay, so then I do across here the same way I did the other one. Okay. And then we're going to put some across here and across here. Burnish it down. Okay. Now, what we need to do, turn these over, and we're going to, yeah, just make sure you put it right up against the edge, all the way across, as close as you can get it. I didn't get that one too close, but we'll fix that in a minute. Okay. Um, so I got it across there. Let's do the other one. Okay. And now... Gonna put it. See if I did that right. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm gonna put it down this side. Make sure you're still with me. I hope I'm staying in frame. Just shoot me if I didn't. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is I take this and I bend it. And I kind of rub it like that. And I do that and I do this over here. You can see what I'm doing? I'm pushing this edge down. Then I like to take it. And do it down some more. So you want to get it nice and snug on both sides. You can do this and then do this. Okay. Now, whoops, I forgot to get scissors, so I'm going to use my kitchen shears. Good old kitchen shears. A lot of people have trouble with this. I just snip it off, call it good. Try to get it to about eighth of an inch or, or a little more, somewhere in that. Okay, let's do that to the other one, and then I'll and then I'll roll the edges on this one. Okay, so now we're gonna roll the edges on this one. This gives you a nice tight fit and it just looks prettier. It looks prettier. That's all it does. Okay. I start with the sides first. I peel the tape. And 
and I lift this one to get it out of my way so I don't go over it. Oops, it didn't stick, so I didn't burnish it enough to try to peel the end. There we go. So I just lift that up, move it out of the way. Okay, I push that one down, burnish it down so it's nice and tight. And then do the other side. We're good there. And we'll do the other one. I didn't need to lift that one because it wasn't as short, but and that much will pull out. There, see? Okay. Now let's do the sides on here. I'm hoping my hand isn't blocking your view. I'm just pulling this strip back. I'll pull it back over here. Pull this one off. Pull this one off. You can do them all at the same time because they're not going to be folding over on themselves. They shouldn't anyway. And just fold that down and over. And do the same here. Okay, got all that? All right. Okay, pull this one and this one. So we're going to do the ends. Now, the trick is take your either your bone folder and squish that in so that it fits in there nicely. And that takes a little bit off the edge. Just kind of pinch it down. And then roll it over. It makes a nice corner that lays flat. And it's not too bulky. And your paper liners should cover all that. Okay, so now let's do this one. Whoops, first do this. You can do it with your thumbnails too, if you can do a better job. I'm just pushing in and pushing down so that it gets flat. Then burnish it down. Now, there are other ways to do that corner. I know Andrea shows you a way uh, from Artie Mae, so you can go check hers when she makes her folio. She does them more, I don't remember, <laughs> more, more slant, I don't know, more slanted this way, I don't know, so that they, when they meet, they're just right next to each other. And I just, that's too, I just couldn't do it. It's fidgety. I didn't like it. But it works well, I know, for her. But I'm so used to doing it this way, it was just too difficult for me to learn something new. <laughs> they say you can teach an old dog new tricks, but I think I've just been doing this for too long. Okay, I'm going to peel this off, the top and the bottom. And I'm going to put, I'm going to peel this off too. Because now we're going to, this is where the rubber meets the road. You can't put it down. You have to come in at an angle so that you're not making contact. Because once you make contact, you know with the, this stuff, it doesn't, it isn't forgiving. So let me see if I can get this. Okay, so now I'm sealed on both sides. 
Oops. Okay. Now let's do the other side. I think the good thing about a video is that you can now come back once I upload this. You can come back and watch it however many times you need to to figure this out and try it for yourself. You want to make sure if there's any pieces hanging over that you tuck them in so you can see exactly how far apart you want to put them. And I think that's good enough. You can use your hand to Black seems to show marks so easily. Okay, now take off these tabs, the top and the bottom, and we're going to do the same thing here. Get underneath it. Yep, make sure it's on there well. See, when you do it that way, you get a pretty flat piece. Okay, now, take your bone folder, take the fat part of it, lay it in there. Just work between those two pieces. Don't do much pressure yet, just press down, but don't try to bend yet. Just get those all lined up really well. If you need to, get in there with this. There you have it. Um, the other thing that I like to do is take a hold of them and squeeze against that back edge. That gives you a nice crease along there. That's against this back edge on both sides. Okay. Now I'm going to tip that back a little bit so it doesn't get in the way. Okay. Now, the Tyvek. You could put it in before you fold all this down. That would be great because that would be included. But of course, I didn't remember to do that, and I rarely do. But what I do is I look at it and see how far I need to go on each side. I also use the Fabri-Tac at this point. With but this, it's easier to do with it laying on the counter. And with the other, you could use, you could use the, um, the tape. I have. I just found this was easier. Tape is not easy to work with. I've tried using the, the glue, you know, using, um, a glue stick. I don't know if that glue stick's going to cause problems down the road, so I'm afraid to use it anymore. I've made lots of albums and lots of journals, and this is how I found it works best for me. Okay. Put the lid back on. Remind myself. So, I know that I've cut my paper. That looks pretty good. Um, my liners I cut so that they will cover from top to bottom. I like them like up right up to about an eighth of an inch down from the top. If I get it straight, that one doesn't look very straight. I was cutting them in a hurry. My hubby was waiting for me to watch TV with him. I work it into the grooves a little bit. And again, work, the, work that glue. You can use this now if you want to. Get it in there good. Now I figure it's sandwiched between the 110 pound cardstock that I'm going to put here, these two pieces, 
So if, if this is cardstock, I'm not using cardstock like I explained because I don't want to be locked into a certain paper. I scooted over, I hope I'm in the frame, I scooted over to about an eighth inch there, an eighth inch from top and bottom. Make sure it's not too cattywampus. And that's where I would glue that down. And this is the order I do it. I put these in first. Okay, so you see I'm clearing this. It's, it's beyond that side of the seam here where it's going to fold. Same with this. Okay, so I glue those down. Cardstock, of course. Then, if you want, like I said, you could punch these edges with not a deep punch, just a regular Martha Stewart punch or something that doesn't go too deep. Then ink it all. Yes, ink all this up. These edges, these three, if you want to, these three, don't need to do this, these sides. Put them on there, glue them on. I use Fabri-Tac for that too. Then you lay this and center it as best you can. These are laid down and glue it right on like that. Okay. Work it, work it, work it, get it to stick, okay? Okay. Then, again, go in with your bone folder, work the seams, work the joints, like that, and make sure everything stays stuck down. Then, work your, we'll pretend they're there. Then, start working it again. Work it with your bone folder first. Then, start working it slowly up, because it's going to be tighter now. You've got another layer of cardstock. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I make a cover. I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something new. Always put your glue, just push it down, push it down, and it won't bubble all over the place. Um, I hope this has helped you, and I hope this will help and encourage some of you to do journal, you know, chipboard journal covers. Um, if you like them, then, then when I've got, I don't, I don't usually make my covers until after I've got my signatures all decorated with whatever I'm going to do, whether it just be as far as the pockets and the, you know, side pockets and tuck spots and whatever on my pages. Then I sew it in, you know, I do a, a three or four hole pamphlet stitch and um, sew it in and when I'm all ready then I print out or cut a piece of chip of cardstock for my focal you know the cover of here and here and I usually put one down here as well but I don't cover it I just